Conclusion Part 2, The Colonial Wars, let's reread Maramau's statement from 1991, he incorrectly maintains that wars between democracies don't happen while consciously making abstraction of the colonial wars in which the so-called democracies are the protagonists. Are colonial wars even considered wars? In absolving the democracies, must we blame those wars on the colonial peoples? guilty of being backwards and barbarians? Starting in 1935, Tilliadi was called upon to confront fascist Italy's aggression against Ethiopia. Mussolini stated his desire to contribute to the spreading of European civilization, it was necessary to put an end to a centuries-long slavery and to their pseudo-barbarian and slave state, that is a slave state led by Negus of the slavers, by the leader of slavers. The regime's propaganda didn't relent in insisting that the horrors of slavery could not be tolerated. In Milan, Cardinal Schuster blessed and consecrated the undertaking that at the price of blood opens Ethiopia's doors to the Catholic faith and Roman civilization and abolishing slavery, bringing light to the darkness of barbarism. Despite being carried out through the massive use of mustard and asphyxiating gas, and through the large-scale massacre of the civilian population, the war was celebrated as civilizing and humanitarian operation, and not without its democratic elements, given that it abolished slavery. We are led to think of the seductive humanitarian operations that exist nowadays. How did Tulliati react to that campaign? In August of 1935, in his report to the Seventh Congress of the Communist International, he observed, quote, for entire decades, the indigenous people of Africa have been subjected to a regime, not only of exploitation and slavery, but of true and proper physical extermination. The crisis years have added to the horrors of the colonial regime installed by the Europeans on that immense black continent. Moreover, the fascists, in the war carried out in Libya from 1924 to 1929, have unequivocally demonstrated what are the fascist methods of colonization. Even in that field, fascism has demonstrated itself to be the most barbaric form of bourgeois rule. Italy's war in Libya has been carried out, from beginning to end, as a war of extermination against the indigenous population unquote having always had a genocidal tendency, even when unleashed by countries with a liberal and democratic order. The colonial wars with fascism become completely and consciously genocidal. On the other hand, Tulliati recognized that Abyssinia is an economically and politically backward country. It's true, so far there's no trace of any national revolutionary movement, or even a mere democratic one, still largely present was the feudal regime. Was it necessary, then? to support or at least not oppose the seductive civilizing and humanitarian intervention? Not at all. On the contrary, Tulliati declared himself ready to support the liberation struggle by the Ethiopian people against the fascist bandits, and that's in consideration not only of the very atrocities of expansionism and colonial rule, but also for the fact that the anti-colonialist struggle even when conducted by countries and people still outside modernity, is nonetheless an integral part of the world revolutionary process that throws imperialism into crisis. Unfortunately, even this lesson from Tilliati has been lost. In 2011, NATO massively intervened against Gaddafi's Libya. To use the words of an authoritative philosopher from well outside the communist camp, Today we know that the war has caused at least 30,000 deaths, against the 300 victims of the initial repression that the regime was condemned for, a regime that the West was determined to overthrow. Among those who called for or approved the intervention in this war, considered neo-colonial even by numerous scholars, journalists and news outlets, were Susanna Camasso, Secretary General of the CJIL, and Rosanna Rossonda a historic figure in Il Manifesto, the Italian Communist Daily, CFR, Lacerdo 2014, ch. 1, 10.